Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll end our Oracle Basics discussion by analyzing the major and minor contributors to resonance structures. In the last video, we looked at how to find the resonance structure for acetate or ethanoate. But when faced with multiple resonance structures, you may have to determine the importance of each contributing structure to the entire resonance scheme. In this situation, if we look at what is happening with the resonance, we have a negative charge moving from an oxygen atom to another oxygen atom, and we can notice there's a plane of symmetry here as the electrons move back and forth. This tells us that these two resonance forms are equal major contributors to the resonance of acetate. But oftentimes you'll find yourself resonating electrons on a molecule where the atom holding the charge is different, or perhaps even the very charge is different, and you have to find out what is considered more important and less important. There is one key to resonance, or organic chemistry, or should I say all of science, and that is stability. If a pair of electrons, an atom, or a molecule is stable, it's going to be happy. If something is happy, it's going to be stable, and it tends to be unreactive. On the other hand, if something is unhappy, it's going to be unstable, and therefore reactive. With mechanisms, you'll find that the unhappier, higher energy pair of electrons is likely to attack something. With resonance, the more stable a contributing structure is, the less likely it wants to shift away from that structure. On the other hand, if the structure is not happy due to the placement of charge, lack of octet, it's going to find a way to change and move away from that structure, making it a less favorable and therefore minor contributor. The first thing you want to look for is a complete octet. If you find yourself looking at two contributing structures where one has a complete octet and the other doesn't, you're going to favor the structure with a complete octet. For this molecule, we have a pi bond sitting between carbon and oxygen, and oxygen has a positive charge. Positivity tends to attract electrons, and so to show the resonance for this molecule, We'll grab these purple double bound electrons and draw an arrow towards the oxygen showing that they are collapsing onto the positive oxygen atom. We draw a double headed arrow to show the resonance that forms from this movement and then we draw the skeleton, in this case the oxygen bound to hydrogen. Oxygen used to have a green lone pair of electrons. It now gained the purple lone pair that used to be a pi bond before resonance. The starting molecule had a positive charge, and looking at carbon, we can think, is this skeletal structure? Does it have an invisible hydrogen? And the answer is no. Remember the trick we talked about in the last video, where if a pi bond moves away from a carbon atom and nothing takes its place, it's going to have an incomplete octet and a positive charge. If you missed that video or need help with formal charge, go back to my Orgo Basics series, which you can find on my website at layerforsci.com slash orgobasics. In analyzing these two structures, they both have the same atoms, all the electrons are present, and both structures have a net charge of plus one. The difference is that in the first structure, we have a complete octet on both carbon and oxygen. Notice that carbon has three sigma and one pi for a total of four bonds and eight electrons, and oxygen has two sigma, one pi, and a lone pair, once again, eight electrons and a full octet. But if we look over to the structure on the right, oxygen has two lone pairs and two sigma bonds for eight electrons and a complete octet, but carbon has only three sigma bonds for six electrons, and it's missing two electrons in its octet. That makes the structure on the right slightly less stable because atoms prefer to have a complete octet, a complete valence shell, and that makes the structure on the right a minor contributor, while the structure on the left is going to be a major contributor. If you're looking at resonance structures where the atoms have complete octets, but there is a choice of having the charge on one type of atom or another, you want to pay attention to which atom is holding the charge and how it feels about that charge. 
Remember, the more electronegative an atom is, the more likely it wants those electrons, the more stable it's going to be holding that negative charge. On the other hand, a less electronegative atom does not like those negative electrons and will be unhappy holding those negative charges. If we look at the structure here, we have carbon with a lone pair of electrons and a negative charge sitting directly near a pi bond. That means that the negative electrons on carbon will be attracted to form a bond between itself and the first carbon of that next pi bond. The carbon here is now going to have five bonds, which means we have to kick out the blue electrons and put them onto the nitrogen atom. We show a double-headed arrow indicating that it's resonance, redraw the skeleton to see where the atoms are, and then fill in the electrons. The green electrons are now sitting as a pi bond between the two carbon atoms, and the blue electrons are sitting as a lone pair on the nitrogen. Nitrogen also had a purple pair to begin with. It's difficult to do a formal charge on carbon because we can't see the invisible hydrogen, but we'll use the rule that if a carbon had a lone pair with a negative charge and now has a pi bond, it's going to be neutral. It gave away one of its electrons to the next carbon atom, so it went from negative to neutral in the process of giving that away. Nitrogen has its bonds and electrons clearly visible, so we'll use the formal charge trick of should minus has. Nitrogen should have five valence electrons in a neutral atom. Directly attached, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Five minus six is negative one, and that means the negative charge transferred over to the nitrogen atom. In both situations, we have a complete octet, but the choice is a negative on carbon versus a negative on nitrogen. If you look at the periodic table, you'll notice that nitrogen is slightly more electronegative than carbon, and that means it's slightly happier and more stable than carbon in holding that negative charge. What does that tell you? That tells you that the structure on the right is considered the major contributor, the structure on the left is considered the minor contributor, and that's due to the electronegativity of the atom holding the charge. You can also use this trick when looking at a positive charge, just keep in mind you also have to pay attention to your octets. For example, looking at this molecule of propanone or acetone, we have the option of resonating the pi bond down to the carbon or up towards the oxygen. I want to show you what each of them looks like to help you realize how to choose one over the other. If we choose to resonate the electrons down to the carbon atom, We'll show our double-headed arrow and then redraw our skeleton. The carbon atom now has an extra pair of electrons, which lets us know quickly that it has a negative charge. For the oxygen, we'll have to do a formal charge. A neutral oxygen should have six electrons, and directly attached here, we have five. Six minus five is positive one, and that means we get a positive charge on the oxygen. If we did the same thing, but instead of moving the electrons down, we move them upward. Let's show the other resonance structure. After redrawing the skeleton, we see that the oxygen gets an extra lone pair, and the trick gives us six minus seven, which is equal to negative one. Oxygen gets a charge of minus one. Carbon, which lost a pi bond, gets a charge of plus one. The starting molecule has a net charge of zero. Each structure on the right and left has a plus one minus one, which also gives us a net of zero. But look at how we distributed the charges. The molecule on the left has the more electronegative oxygen with a negative, the less electronegative carbon with a positive, that's more stable. The molecule on the right has the more electronegative oxygen with a positive charge, which is terrible compared to the less electronegative carbon with a negative charge. Of the two extremes, the structure on the right is extremely minor, so we'll do minor exclamation point. The structure on the left is going to be the more important resonance contributor. I don't necessarily want to call this major due to the next rule that we're about to discuss showing that indeed the neutral molecule is our major contributing structure. For rule number three, we're looking at the idea of separation of charges. You want to minimize your separation of charges when drawing resonance structures. In the example we looked at earlier, we started with a neutral molecule of acetone, and then we showed how the pi bond collapses onto oxygen 
to give us a resonant structure with a negative oxygen and a positive carbon. Compared to the other extreme that we showed with a positive oxygen and negative carbon, this is more important. However, molecules prefer not to be charged. Charges are considered a burden, and the less of that burden of charge they have to carry, the more stable they're going to be. So when comparing the structure on the right and the left, the structure on the right has a separation of charges. These opposites are so close to each other, the molecule can't help but have its negative electrons attack that positive carbon and shift right back to our starting neutral happy molecule. In this case, we have the major contributing structure is neutral and the minor structure has that separation of charges. But sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where the separation of charges are inevitable, such as a nitro group, which is NO2, where the N is double bound to one oxygen with a positive charge and single bound to another oxygen with a negative. In this case, we start out with a separation of charge that we cannot get rid of. But we have another resonance structure where we can take the pi bond and move it over towards the nitrogen. This would give nitrogen too many bonds and violate its octet. So nitrogen has the option of breaking a pi bond between itself and oxygen and collapsing those electrons onto oxygen. To show the resonance that forms from these arrows, we'll start with the skeleton showing just the atoms and then we'll see what happened to our bonds. The lower oxygen had three lone pairs, still has three lone pairs and a negative charge. It didn't change. The upper oxygen had two lone pairs of electrons and now has that extra green lone pair giving us a formal charge of negative one. The purple electrons moved over to form a pi bond between carbon and nitrogen once again giving nitrogen that charge of plus one. And don't forget the initial carbon that lost a pi bond and gained nothing in return gets a charge of plus one because its octet is now deficient. The structure on the left started out with a separation of charge but only one separation of charge. The structure on the right has two positives and two negatives. And even though they all cancel out to give you a net neutral charge, the fact is we have a greater degree of separation, making that much less stable and therefore a minor contributing structure. While the structure on the left has minimal separation and will be our major contributing structure. This also comes into play when we look at the very first molecule we started out with, acetate. We showed a resonance where we had carbon double bound to one oxygen and single bound to another with a negative charge on the oxygen with three lone pairs. What we didn't show is another potential resonance where the pi bond between carbon and oxygen will collapse onto oxygen without anything else moving. This gives us a new structure that not only has a negative oxygen at the bottom, but now we also have an oxygen at the top with three lone pairs, a negative charge, and carbon that lost a pi bond, depleting its octet and having a positive charge. On the left, we have just one negative. On the right, we have complete separation of charge, not to mention the incomplete octet on carbon, making that an extremely minor contributing structure, while the one on the left is going to be the major structure. And this concludes our series on Orgo Basics. For even more practice on resonance, hybridization, formal charge, and more, check out my membership site, which you can find at studyhall.layerforsci.com slash join. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.